Amwell, February 14, 1953, Self-Observation and Relationship. When you say you like a person it does not mean you do like the whole person. There are sides you do not like. But you like some sides enough to put the sides you do not like into the background. Occasionally this arrangement of like and dislike alters and the sides you do not like come into the foreground and for the time being you do not like the person. In our human relationship this is a pretty constant situation. If you do not work on yourself and the phases of dislike are allowed to make you think and feel negative and you take pleasure in identifying with them, the relationship may be made a miserable thing. Once you identify and become badly negative with a person, you have spoiled something. It is your fault. You have not worked on yourself. You never thought you had to, perhaps, and were silly enough to imagine that relationship just happened by itself. Now no relationship happens by itself. It needs conscious work on either side. If one person works, and the other does not, it means hard work, or it becomes impossible. He, working on himself, refuses to quarrel. She is furious because she cannot make him negative or vice versa. If neither side works, then they serve one of the purposes of organic life, which is to feed the moon. Their bare garden quarrels, their mutual dislikes, criticisms or hatreds, the whole infernal brood of negative emotions and thoughts set up vibrations of a certain wavelength that are transmitted and used by the moon which is beneath us in the descending order of creation. Nothing at a higher level wishes food of such a filthy kind. You must realize that most people are very often, if not usually, in a negative state, including yourself and manufacture this bad quality of psychological food. We five in a universe in which everything is made use of and everything is useful for something. It is like an economically well-run farm. Nothing is wasted. If we make evil use of our psychic energies, the products are used for something else. Our negative emotions, nastily enjoyed, but useless to us, are used as dung is in a farm. Consider the vast quantity of them being produced every moment all over the world. A little imagination like this helps you to grasp the terrible significance of this part of the work teaching that says the human world is governed not by sex, as some think, but by negative emotions. To a being on the moon, having an organ of side that responds not to the vibrations from the sun, but to vibrations of negative emotions, the earth must look as if it were covered in flames. Now to return to this question of liking some sides of a person and disliking other sides. We do not see another person through his imaginary eye. He takes himself as one person as a unity. His imaginary eye causes him to think so. But you see him differently. You see him as made up of many different sides which are often quite contradictory. He does not. He says, don't you like me? As if he were only one person. If you answered that you like some sides of him, or her, it would come as a shock. To what is it a shock? Why, to his imaginary eye, which is not perceived by him nor is it perceived by you. It is not perceived by him, because he does not observe that he is not one but many. It is not perceived by you, for you see him as many and not as one. So is the life game played. But if he begins to observe himself and slowly realizes and how slowly that he is not one eye but many eye wrapped up in a cellophane wrapper labeled eye, he begins to be a different person. He has begun to work on himself. He sees through the fatuous and vain illusion of imaginary eye. He begins to see himself as you do. And if you now say to him that you like some sides of him but not other sides, he, or she, will not be mortally offended or hurt. He, or she, will become much stronger and not nearly so vulnerable and upset. Now two people, reaching this stage of increase of consciousness and so of inner development, will be able to make a relationship which would have been impossible before. Both of them can be conscious of negative sides that they must separate from, not identify with, not enjoy, not put the feeling of I into. Such people, knowing this, and doing it, and so standing, as it were, in the entrance porch of the work, are so different from people asleep in life, that it can scarcely be believed. Now for those who cannot begin to observe themselves and in consequence, cannot take in the work, this paper may be of use. They can see others as having many sides, some of which they like and some of which they dislike. They will no doubt admit this. But they do not see the same thing in themselves, because they are spellbound by imaginary eye which makes them believe they are one and not many. They do not believe they have different sides which means different eye in them and so cannot get on in the work. There may be another reason for their blindness apart from imaginary eye. It may be as well that they do not see themselves as others see them. It may be that their conceit could not face it. But it is usually a matter of imaginary eye apostrophe eye it blocks the way to self-observation. Now whenever you see a side of somebody which you dislike, try to define it as clearly as you can. Then try to find the same thing in yourself by observation of yourself. This may help those who find it impossible to observe themselves unaided. People do not do this in life. 
people in the work are supposed to do it. Later on, they must do so.